Good morning, everyone, from cloudy Adelaide. It's a bit ordinary here this morning, um, but it is dry compared to the last couple of days. There's your weekly weather report. Um, but I just thought I would pop in this morning and give you... I'm just turning the volume down on my... There we go. Um, yeah, thought I would come in and do a little demo using... Lindy's Gang Magicals and how to colour and stamp using them for all of your cards. So I'm just going to wait for a couple people to tune in. I do know that it is a Monday morning, but I figure, hey, why not? I'm avoiding doing other things. Um, <laughs> I have spent the last few hours packing orders and this morning have posted all of the orders that have come through over the weekend so start stalking your posties and uh, keeping an eye out on the mail so everything is on its way so this morning uh, like I said I'm going to be doing some demonstrations with the Lindy's gang magicals uh, the shakers and the pots as well, um, showing you how to colour and get a beautiful watercolour effect without a whole lot of effort. So I thought that it's it's something that is super easy for people to do and I'm not going to bang on too much about it, but I just want to show you some little tips and techniques. These are some cards that I have created previously using the Lindy's Magicals uh, on uh, with stamped images so this is a special one that was created for Simon Says Stamps a little earlier on um, I think that was in December November December um, this is using a paper rose stamp where I've colored it using Bratwurst Brown and Cowabunga Copper this is a Prima stamp that has been around for a really long time but I heat embossed the images then colored the background so i've got a beautiful soft effect on this card front and i've also used the magicals to color the seam binding ribbon that is squished in under there and then this is an example of one of the cards that i have been teaching around australia for the last couple of years where we use magicals in the background and color some images so this morning i'm just going to create a few card fronts as I like to call them. Um, I have pre-stamped some images here and I have got a few of the different stamps that are available um, in my online store and show you some really cool techniques using them on a couple of different paper surfaces as well. So uh, I'm going to start out with the paper rose stamp here that I have that I've got and um, Oh, I see there's a few of you tuned in. Good morning, Michelle and Shelley and Kathy and Victoria and Karen. Hey, Karen, how are you, sweetheart? Bronnie, Jenny. Um, so, yeah, this is a paper row stamp. This is uh, currently retails for $18.95. I've got them 15% off this weekend, so you can jump online. Um, and what I've done here is I used the stamping platform that I have here and I'll demonstrate with that in a moment and I masked off an area here with some post-it notes and stamped my images across the page now if you're wanting to do masking so masking is where the images overlap and look like well I guess look like that um, what I tend to do is I use a post-it note and pop the images down here so that I can then stamp and it. You can see how it lays over the edges and creates a little buffer so you don't layer up. Where I have not completely stamped the edges here, I'm going to use a permanent black pen that I'm just trying to put my hands on. Um, this is one of the pilot pens. I've actually got these, I'm expecting a delivery of these today, so I'll pop these up online straight away. But what I like is I can then just join up those edges and and draw the uh, tips of those flowers in where I was a little bit lazy and didn't stamp them all the way. Uh, because it's a permanent pen, it won't 
the ink won't run when I add the water in a moment. So um, you'll have to excuse if you can hear my dogs barking in the background. Both of them are in play mode this morning. Oh, good morning to Josh. I see that you're watching, mate. I miss you. Josh is the manager of my gym, Anytime Fitness. Um, so yeah, anyway, moving on. Right, so I've, color, I've just touched up those little edges so you wouldn't even be able to tell that I didn't color inside the lines. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm going to use the Lindy's Magical Shakers as a watercolor. And I'm going to just pop a little bit onto here. So they are a pigment dye-based powder. So the pigment means that they're full of color. The dye means that they are permanent and the powder means that you need to activate it to get the magic to happen. So I've just put a little bit here onto my glass mat. I've got a wet paintbrush and then I'm just going to color my images. Nothing more than that. And I'm gonna be pretty loose with it, mostly because I'm lazy for no other reason. But perfection is overrated, guys, seriously. Um, what I want to do, you can see how I've got that line there. I'm going to be a little bit cheeky and I'm going to use a water spray to let it whoops, bleed down so I get a little bit of a run sort of effect. So I am doing this on a 300 GSM watercolour card, meaning that it is a heavyweight cardstock. It is not a absorbent paper stock, meaning that the water is gonna sit on top and allow me to move the color around a bit. If I wanna add a second color, so I've got Alpine Ice Rose, I can do that because it's still sitting on top there and it's wet, so I can blend that in nicely. And a little bit more, to, bit more water to activate that. There we go. That looks pretty good. And again, because I want to get a little bit of a run going and give away, give that um, beautiful watercolor effect, I'm going to dab that off. Um, and then I'm just gonna color these little end flowers and pop those on the edge there. Now, if it's too dark, because it's working on watercolor paper, good morning, Tracy, darling. Um, because I'm working on watercolor paper, I can dab that off and I'm just gonna pop that aside to dry, but you can kind of see what I've, what's going on here. And as that's drying, the shimmer is going to come out because all of the Lindy's Gang Magical Shakers all have a beautiful shimmer to them. So that is using the Paper Rose stamp set um, and it's got these beautiful little sayings on them, so I'm going to stamp one of those on there when it's dry and I've made a quick and easy little card front. Bang. Done. Uh, second one I might do, I've got this gorgeous Tandy Art from AB Studios um, stamp. So this, these are a little bit more pricey, but they um, retail for $28 less you discount this weekend um, or Monday. I guess I'm going to keep the sale going till probably Wednesday. But these are designed by a fabulous artist and I think they're absolutely gorgeous. So I have stamped again onto watercolor paper and this time I'm going to use a palette, a water palette here, and I'm gonna pop some colors into here and mix them up. So I'm putting a really small amount in. So I wanna add a Guten Tag Teal Whoops. Now the shakers um, have got a, a scoopy side and they've also got, also got a shaker side. Now I'm only using the shaker side because I can, I've can i got more control over how much powder is going to come out. So that is Lederhausen Laurel Guten Tag Teal. I will pop a little bit of this beautiful Magnolia Magenta Gold and for her face, for her skin tone, I'm going to add Umpapa Pink. So these have got the coolest names as well. Uh, they are 
this collection, which has got all the German names, the Guten Tag Teal, Lederhosen Laurel. Uh, what else have we got? We have got... Where are we? Bavarian Blue. There's a few others. They all are because Tracy from Lindy's has a German heritage. So there you, you get that German name. All right, so I need to activate all of these. So you can see I've got a little bit of powder. I've got a pipette with some fancy Adelaide water in it. And I'm just putting a little bit of water in to activate that. So they really need to do that. So from here, I can now color my images beautifully. So I have stamped this image onto watercolor paper. I have stamped it with a black archival ink. So you have to use a black archival ink when you're doing this technique because we're going to be adding water and we don't want to lose the integrity of our image. So what that means is we don't want our image to run and for the colors to bleed into each other. We want we want the colors to stay, uh, sorry, the stamping to stay nice and sharp. So um, I just mixed up some, what color was that? Aged copper. And I'm gonna start by, um, look at that, I'm just gonna mix all of those colors together. Oh, that's really pink, isn't it? Um, you can do the sky. So if I wanna do the sky, I'm just gonna get a bigger brush here, go in, and get that color onto there. So I'm going to keep it super loose and relaxed and get that color in and around there. So because I'm working on watercolor paper, the water is doing the work. Don't be afraid of using water on watercolor paper. That is what it's designed for. I quite often see people being really careful with the amount of water and then it looks dry and you can see the brush strokes. Um, not necessary. With watercolor paper, it's designed to take the water. Let it. Let the water do all of the work. So I'm not doing anything more than just whacking it on, um, for lack of a technical term. Going to pop a bit of green down the bottom. Uh, I want those two colors to merge into each other where the grass meets the sky. So I'm just going to let that overlap, like so. And you can see that I haven't totally gone right to the edge of my stamped image. I've got some little white bits around the place. I've done that for a couple of reasons. Good morning, Stefan. My very, very good friend, Stefan, is watching. Um, and I can see that you are watching there, mate. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to colour the hair. So the idea of leaving that little white gap around the stamping is that the colours aren't going to bleed into each other as much and I'm going to end up with, uh, I'm not going to end up with a hot mess of brown and colours that I can't control. So just popping that on like so and those colours are not blending because they're not touching. I'm also going to add a little bit of pink here for the skirt, a little bit of that magenta. Um, I always have some paper towel handy just to take off any additional uh, water and color that, do that while I'm at it. Just color that in, touch it up. So it's giving that really beautiful, easy watercolor effect that um, is surprisingly effortless. There's not a whole lot of talent involved in doing this. I'm just gonna set that, let that sit for a moment just to let that water soak in. So the Lindy's Gang Magicals are, like I said, a pigment dye based powder. So they have a permanency to them, which means that as it dries, the colors are not going to reactivate if I pop something else over the top. They're not a watercolour powder, they are a dye, they stain the paper and that is where this product differs from a lot of the others on the market. So this weekend I have got all of these out on special for 15% off. Um, I think that you need them all, buy them all. 
Um, no, you don't. So I'm just going to add a bit of yellow here because I want to do her wings and a bit of water in to activate that. The other cool thing about these is you have full control over how intense that color is. So the more powder I add to this mix here, the more intense the yellow is going to be or the more intense the, um, the blue is going to be. It is totally up to you on what you want to do with the color. So skin tone here, you can see that I've gone in totally pink with her face. Yep, shagged that up nicely. So I'm just gonna dab a bit of color off. I'm gonna give her some rosy cheeks. Just dab a little bit of pink on the side there. Um, oh, I've got the shakes this morning. Maybe I need some more coffee. Um, so yeah, nice and simple. So it doesn't have to be complicated. It's gonna look kind of pretty um, once it dries and it's got that lovely shimmer to it. The, I'm gonna pop a little bit of blue in and around her eyes for a little bit of a pop. And what I will actually do is I will trim this down and put it on a card front, pop a sentiment on and I have got a quick and easy card. Um, so that, I hope I didn't make that one look too difficult. I'll pop that aside. So that is from the Tandy Art stamps from AB Studios. Um, there's some beautiful stamps in that collection and they look absolutely gorgeous. Um, I wanna show you how to stamp using a stamp press as well. Uh, I have always been a huge fan of La La Land stamps. Um, these are certainly Whoops, not to everybody's liking. Some people find them a little bit creepy and a bit kiddy, but these are the stamps that I used to work on when I was learning how to use Copic markers. Um, because they have got nice big areas to color with, um, they work really, really well. So a stamp press is fantastic because I can go back over if my stamping isn't perfect and make the um, the intensity of the black much stronger without having to line up my stamp again. So I've got a little magnet there so you can see exactly where, um, the, where the, um, the paper's not gonna move. My stamp is stuck to the platform and I'm gonna pop some ink on that. Um, Actually, I'll just do the whole thing. Sorry about the bumping. Uh, and then I'm going to push that down onto there. So if I don't get a, fir a, a great print impression the first time, oh, but I did and I nailed it, um, I can go back and I can make it more intense. So this is especially good if you've got stamps with a large black area. Um, and the image hasn't moved and it's lovely and it's sharp and it's worked the first time and surprisingly enough, I've nailed it, um, which never happens. So, coloring these with Lindy's, just ex exactly the same process, but this is not on watercolor paper. This is on a plain cardstock. So the difference this time is I need to work a little bit more confidently meaning I need to work just a little bit quicker. I need to have a bit more, um, I've got gold there. What other colors do I want? Orange. I need to you know, commit to the coloring. Because the paper is a lot more porous, it's gonna soak in a lot quicker and you're not going to get as much movement in the color. So. This time I'm going to, I'm going to start with her hair and I'm just going to go down, down. So these are good for kids to colour these stamps. Um, I've got these out on a special as well and I've got actually quite a huge range of them. I do think that they are super cute and like I said, they're fantastic for copy colouring but there's absolutely no reason why I can't use them for 
magicals and using this sort of watercolor sort of style effect. Now blending two colors into each other is nothing more than choosing the right colors. So I have used blue and purple and I know that those two colors when you mix them together are going to work because they are alongside each other on the color wheel. So working in like that, get in there. So the colors that I'm using here, this is Time Travel Teal with Magnolia Magenta Gold. So I activated a navy blue here and what am I gonna color that with? Didn't really think that through, did I? Okay, so I'll use her, I'll do her tail in navy blue. So that's a little bit dark and I can see that straight away. So I've just rinsed off my brush and you can see that because I hesitated, it has left the mark where I first put down my color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use green and I'm going to create a new color. Yeah, baby, look at that, that worked. And it's disguised that little furfy, that little mistake that I made there, so, all right. So just using them like watercolors. So you can mix the magicals with anything at all. So there's no, you just have to activate the powder. So what that means is you need to pop something wet with it. So it could be water, it could be a modeling paste, it could be um, gel medium. You can mix it with a hand sanitizer because hand sanitizer would then make it more like an alcohol-based ink. I like mixing it with hand sanitizer because the hand sanitizer has the water element to it, which activates the paper, act, act, <laughs> activates the powder. So if you want to make a, um, if you want to make a alcohol-based ink, using magicals you still need to activate that powder it doesn't work with straight isopropyl alcohol um good morning leanne missed the start again what have you been doing with your time girl um <laughs> i see you all right so you can see how those colors are working in quite nicely there um and it's giving that watercolor effect but i'm using magicals most importantly um it's going to have that beautiful shimmer to it um, skin tone, I have got a copper here, so I've got no idea how this is going to look because I haven't planned this at all. Oh yeah, that's not so bad. She's got a little tan going on. Um, Tammy, I haven't heard it with mixing it with hand sanitizer, a little demo. Yeah, sure. Let me see if I can find some hand sanitizer, um, close to me. That would be the magic problem the magic question but um, I accidentally discovered the hand sanitizer trick when I was working at a craft fair because a lady asked me if I can make alcohol inks out of them so yeah I'll give it a go in a sec all right so I've just colored her face pop a little bit of pink in her cheeks for a little bit of color um, and you kind of get the gist of it oh and I didn't color her hand in which is a bit rude isn't it So you can get a really sweet watercolor effect out of um, out of those. Um, okay, so let's look at that hand sanitizer situation then. All right, um, let me make a clean spot because I know what's going to happen. So this stamp that I've got here, this is on Copic paper. So this could work. Um, this is using these really lovely Avery Earl stamps these are new these haven't been out very long at all um i do i did a sorry found some hand sanitizer um i did a car a copic class with these a little while ago and we created i don't have the cards handy but i have a photocopy we created these really cute cards using these avery earl stamps so these are the peekaboo Peekaboo Jungle and Peekaboo Fair. So um, these, are, these are fantastic because you can cut out all of these little elements 
and you can build some beautiful cards with them. So I want to do a, um, so I had some pre-stamped on Copic paper. So I've got all their little heads stamped out. Um, okay, so when I've done it with alcohol hand sanitizer in the past, I use one of these little palettes here because it gives me something to build into. Um, Radio. So I have just got, oh, that's looking a little bit damp, a little bit dry, but I'll just do a little squirt of hand sanitizer into there. And what color, what color, what color? I will go with time travel teal. Please distract me with using hand sanitizer. Okay. So, pop the colour onto there and then I need to stir it and mix it together. So, it just gives a different sort of effect. So, this colour... Be sparing with that stuff. Oh, yeah, I can tell you, it is the hardest thing to come across at the moment, isn't it? And if you do come across hand sanitizer, they're wanting to charge the freaking world for it. Like, what is that all about? Anyway, um, okay, so this colour, Time Travel Teal, when you mix it with water, looks different. It looks like that. So you can see that the hand sanitizer is doing something a little bit different to it. And I'm going to see if I can make that a little bit more intense. Oh, that's a bit more powder than I anticipated, but you know, let's commit to it. Um, okay, so this here... Where is a bit of paper, a bit of paper? How do I not have any other paper here? Seriously. Um, okay. Straight on here on Copic paper, you can see what the colour is supposed to look like. And that's mixed with water. So Copic paper has a different property to it, but I'll show you on normal paper in a minute. So this is the hand sanitizer mix and it's soaking straight in. Hey, the colour's working surprisingly well. I'm just rinsing off my brush on the side there. And the pigments are still coming all together. So that's the cool thing about the Lindy's is all of those pigments have to come together. So essentially it looks the same, but the way that it's soaked into the cardstock is totally different. I'm just going to jump up and grab a different piece of cardstock. Sorry, coming back. So I have got a piece of watercolour card here. So if I do the same thing, I don't have any Yupo paper handy before you ask. So you can see straight away, hand sanitizer, because of that alcohol content in it, soaks right into the cardstock. Um, and this hand sanitizer is... I can't read that, but I reckon it's about 60% alcohol. Um, so normally with just water, it sits on there and you can see it's still got that, that shine to it, the colours sitting on there. So just to show you again. So you can create some really cool effects. So if you were using a Yupo paper, it would sit on top of the Yupo paper because it's a lot more glossy. But the colour's different, the intensity's different, and the pigment's different. Um, so you kind of get the idea. But they do look different. So you're only limited by your imagination. Seriously. So I'm going to clean up this little hot mess here. I'm going to get rid of that. Look at that. So these little palettes are available, readily available at um, Spotlight and... Places like that, they're, they're super easy to use. Um, they are my go-to because you can make up these little worlds of colour and play with them all along, um, all throughout the day. Um, I can come back and reactivate that if I need to and grab that colour and um, use it again because it's, it's sitting in that little well. I can easily do that. Um, the... So yeah, colouring stamped images just, just works an absolute treat. So 
all of those stamps that you have got because I know you have all of the stamps um, you can do anything at all you are like I said you're only limited so only limited by your imagination and, and the tools that are in front of you um, so these little these are the little Avery L stamps that I would normally use with Copic markers because they're super cute and they look like they should be blended but why sh why should I be you know using Copic markers I can use magicals um, this is one of the new ones I know Avery Earl did a blog hop last week using this beautiful sunflower set and they just look so good I saw so many cool ideas with this stamp set uh, the my second one that I did which is my La La Land girl which is what this one here um, that's dried up quite nicely and it's got a beautiful shimmer to it as well so um, they look really really nice and if I go back to that very first one I did using the ooh, paper rose stamps you can kind of see what happens there so I'm just I'll finish this one off um, so if I was going to put this on a card front I will do a doodle line around the edge like so and Actually, I always do a double doodle line because then it actually looks like I've drawn it rather than it's um, like a, you know, half-assed effort. It actually looks like it's supposed to be there and it's supposed to be a little bit more scribbly. Um, and if I could find the stamp set, sorry to lean across camera. Um, these little pouches that I use, this is how I store my, my stamps. Um, everyone has got... Everyone's got different ways of storing their stamps. These are the Avery Earl stamp pockets. So you get 50 in a pack. And I think I sell them for, oh, there you go, $20.95. Um, 50 in a pack holds like heaps. So if I've got a matching stamp and die set, I will put a piece of paper in it like this. And I've got the stamp on one side and the matching die will be on the other side. Um, so I want to stamp a sentiment on this guy and this one says a little something to brighten your day. Let's use that. Next thing will be finding a stamp block. Wow, that's seen better days. Okay, so I'm just going to pop that onto there and use some black archival ink. Now, that would be fantastic if I could actually see through that. So I'm just going to do something a bit cheeky and stick some hair sanitizer on it to clean my stamp block so that I can see through it. Well, that's made all the difference. Okay, so I've got this tiny little stamp block here and what I want to do is... Whoops, sorry, bumped my head on the camera stamp onto there so I could have used my stamp press but that works for me so quick and easy and simple it's not supposed to be hard but you can totally use magicals to color all of your stamps watercolor paper plain cardstock copic paper is still looking pretty good uh, lots and lots and lots of different ways of colouring. So even if I just grab this little line, and a bit of a bit of a tip when you're colouring something with watercolours, the more perfect you try and make it, you'll find you make more mistakes. So this little guy here. See, I'm, I'm being really loose with it. I'm creating, I'm leaving some white space, leaving some edges. Oh, good morning, Michelle. I see you watching. How are you, sweetheart? Um, so yeah, you can be a little, lot more loose with it. But 
Oh, that's a lot of brown. Hang on. You can be a lot more loose with it and you're going to get something that looks more visually appealing. Because let's be honest, that's what we're all striving for. We're striving for something that looks visually appealing. It's not necessarily about perfection. It's about creating something confidently. Um, and if you're creating something that you think you, that you think isn't perfect, the people that you are giving your cards to, they don't care. They don't care that it is not perfect. They care that they you have made them something beautiful. You, they care that you have made them something yourself. They are more interested in that. They don't care if you have coloured outside the lines. They don't care if you have not made it absolutely perfect. They are more interested in the fact that you have made something especially for them. So stop overthinking it, people. It's just freaking craft, okay? Um, I am the least perfect crafter. Um, I am super relaxed. I tend to go with it rather than overanalyze it. Um, I tend to, I now think that if people don't like what I do, then don't damn well look at it. And I know that's possibly a little bit of a more of an arrogant sort of um, thing to say, but I think it makes sense and it, it makes me more, it makes me a lot happier with the things that I create. I find that I am making things to please myself rather than making things to please all the people around me. Um, and that has come across in my crafting. I find, I'm finding now that it's, it's working really, really, really well for me since, since that whole bonus cancer thing a few years ago. Um, I'm a lot more relaxed about what I do and I've come back down to that whole thinking of it's just craft people it's just paper it's just paint and if you don't like it turn the page put it in the bin pop it aside stop over stop overthinking it um, if that makes any sense at all so um, there's my my words of wisdom for the day um, I'll move on now um, so yeah, there you go. So currently I have got um, special online with the Lindy's Magicals, um, all the Lindy's products actually are all 15% off. So these shakers that I'm using here, they all come down to about $6.80 each and they are, um, there's 20 something colors in the collection. They they're not a new company. Lindy's, Lindy's have been around for 23, 24 years. They know their stuff. They are a, thank you, Susie. Um, they are a product that is tried and tested. So give it a go. Have a play. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to flick me an email. Ask me the questions. Um, Make sure that you are using the things that you purchase. Think of all the different ways that you can use them. I don't know if you can see that that shimmer in her hair is looking awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, yes, Delfina, how are you, darling? Crafting should be fun and enjoyable. You're damn right it should be. Absolutely. If it's, if it's too hard, you're doing it wrong. Um, I hope I didn't make that difficult. Enough waffle from me for the day. Um, NatalieMay.com.au. Jump online, um, buy some. That would be fantastic. And any orders that come in for Magicals this afternoon, um, I will pop in some of these little samples for, for the first five people. So have a great day, guys. Thank you for watching and chat to you all really, really soon.